Okay, this is what we see in Psalm 65 and um, verses 1 to uh, 1 to 4, right? Um, Psalm 65, 65. Praises awaiting you, O God, in Zion, and to you the vow shall be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you, that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. And uh, verse 5 also, by awesome deeds in righteousness, you will answer us, O God of our salvation. You who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of the far off seas. And then it goes on to say what else the Lord does, right? So it says, blessed is the man who you choose and cause to approach you that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. And verse five, but awesome deeds of in, awesome deeds in righteousness, you will answer us. O God of our salvation, you who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of the far off seas. So as we look to him, you know, and pray as, as we start this day, you know, just be mindful of the fact that he's the one who hears prayer, right? He hears our prayer. And, um, and, and as the psalmist writes, that uh, we draw near to him with praise and with, with our prayer, with our petitions. And he answers by awesome deeds in righteousness. With awesome deeds in righteousness it means, um, you know, works that are awesome or inspiring. And, uh, and these are works of righteousness you know, because he is righteous. And it's very clear that he answers. And so let's uh, go before him today with our praise. Let's go before him today with our prayers and with our petitions. And, and may the Lord answer with awesome deeds in righteousness. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the God who uh, always hears, Lord, always hears our prayer, Father God. We thank you. We come before you this morning with praise. We come before you this morning, lifting up your name and exalting your name, for you are worthy of our praises. Lord, you are worthy of all the praises of the entire earth, O oh Father God, and the entire universe, O oh Master. Yes, Lord, even as we see in your word, O oh Father God, in the heavens and on the earth and under the earth, O oh God, that every tongue shall confess and every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are indeed Jesus the Lord. And Lord, we, we come before you in praise. We come before you, having experienced your hand, having experienced your goodness and your grace, Father God. So we give you praise, Father God, this morning. We give you thanks for all that you do, God. And uh, this morning, we draw near with petition, with our prayers, oh, Father God, prayers for ourselves, Lord. Lord, we pray for our own spiritual lives that it may be enriched. Lord, we pray for our own walk with you, God, that we may walk closely. Lord, we pray, the Lord, that every... Uh, uh, every decision, every choice that we may uh, we may undertake, we may take up, Lord, may be made in you, Father God, as led by your Spirit, O oh, Father God. And Lord, may our life, Lord, reflect your glory, Father God, because you have called us to proclaim your virtues, to proclaim, declare who you are, Lord, through our lives, God, to what what we how we live our lives and what we declare through our mouths, O oh God. And so may we do that, Lord. And Father God, even before, even as we bring our petitions, God, personal needs and requirements and uh, and uh, everything, Father God, the breakthrough breakthroughs that we need, the directions that we need, Father God, Lord, we bring them before you, Lord, because you're the one who answers prayer. And Lord, even as we read in your psalm, uh, read in your word, God, we see that uh, by awesome works of righteousness, God, you will answer awesome deeds in righteousness lord we thank you that you will answer and we so we we stand on your promises we stand lord in faith lord that it will be an awesome deed in righteousness god it will be awe inspiring it will be so noticeable but it will be a work of righteousness we thank you lord we thank you for this promise and we receive it in our lives god in all the areas lord that 
that need, Lord, these awesome needs, God, awesome deeds of Father God, and all areas that, that need, that require you to step in, Lord, we invite you, and may your awesome deeds and righteousness, Lord, change those very things, God, that we've been praying, that we've been asking you and inviting you, Lord, and um, yes, Master, have your way, we give you praise and all the glory, in Jesus' matchless name we pray, Amen, Amen. Okay, welcome back. Welcome once again. Okay, let's turn to uh, Ephesians, and uh, we are looking. We've we're finished with Galatians, so um, so uh, there will be a quiz. I'll I'll post it, and um, you know you can uh, do that quiz, uh, take up that quiz, right? Um, now we we've, we've been looking at Ephesians. We we looked at. Uh, how Paul went to Ephesus and how he spent time in his initial visit was a very a brief visit, but the second visit, uh, he spent uh, close to three years, established a church, uh, a strong work was established there. And uh, the, the work seemed to have spread because people came from the surrounding regions to be taught by him in at the school of Tyrannus. And, uh, and he trained them. He uh, seems to have been a very, very, very powerful work because a lot of people were trained who, who went to the surrounding regions and um, who shared the gospel as well. Right, so um, we've been looking at chapter one. Chapter one, we see, we see that it's uh, uh, it's it's talking about uh, who, what the believer has uh, when he has come, when he or she has come to Jesus. What the believer has received, what the believer has become uh, in Christ, uh, in receiving Christ, in becoming a believer as a new creation, what the believer has received. You know, it's very powerful um, because we see that we have been chosen. We see that we are blessed, right? Uh, that we've been blessed beyond measure in Christ, blessed with every spiritual blessing, right? which means that uh, the entire list, um, whatever is uh, that we can say as, um, you know, okay, that's a blessing. That is a blessing. The entire list of blessing, you know, we have been blessed with in this in the heavenlies. Right? We have been every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we are blessed, and we are chosen. You know, it says that we are, he chose us in Him. So that um, you know, chosen meaning that He did not choose our choice. You know, because He's given us free will. We know that. Um, so He cannot make us do what we don't want to do. He always gives us that choice. So. He's, he's given us a choice, and uh, when a person uh, receives Christ, you know, then you know he, the Lord, of course, being omniscient, he knows the choice that we make. So, um, so when a person receives Christ or chooses to follow Christ, then it, it says that you know uh, we are chosen in Him, we are chosen, and 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 the word we see there. Um, 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 that chosen to be holy, chosen to be blameless, right? chosen chosen in Him um, to be holy and blameless before Him in love. The ones who have made the choice to follow Jesus, right? That is chapter, uh, verse four. Then we see in verse five that we have been predestined. Okay, that word predestination, predestined meaning um, that what are we predestined to be? Right? We are pre destined pre which means that he has already uh, decided this that this is what will happen to a child of god right when a person becomes a child of god how does a person become a child of god or family uh, come into the family of christ it is it is only through jesus <coughs> excuse me sorry <coughs> it is only through great jesus right only one when, when a person receives christ like we see in john chapter 1 Okay, um, so when that happens, then we are predestined. What are we predestined? We are predestined to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself. Okay, this is we are predestined to be adopted as His children, as the family of God. And then talks about redemption, and uh, the and then uh, what He made us, uh, you know, the wisdom. Uh, the grace that he made to abound towards us and all that we saw you know and we went up to chapter I mean, sorry, up to verse 14 i think right 
Um, so verse, uh, let's look at verses uh, 13 onwards, 13 uh, and then 13 and 14, and then and then go go forward, right? So verse 13, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay, so uh, what, we, what we see here is that uh, Paul's saying that okay, you trusted and uh, you believed. Okay, in whom you trusted, in Christ you trusted, and uh, and after you heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation. So you trusted, you heard the salvation message, you heard the word of truth, and you trusted. Okay, um, then he said, the second part of the verse, he said, in whom having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So this is what happens to a person who puts the trust and who believes in Christ, who believes uh, because of uh, hearing the word of truth, who trusts in Christ, uh, hearing the salvation message, who believes. Uh, so what happens is when a person believes in Christ, that uh, the person is sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. There is a mark of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, um, you know, uh, you was the mark um, of possession, you know, like saying that okay, you are mine, right? You are mine. You we belong to God. You know, it's a it's a mark of ownership, right? And then verse fourteen: Who is the guarantee of our inheritance? He's the guarantee. He's the he's the earnest. He's the title deed. Right, he is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So, the Holy Spirit indwelling us is a guarantee of more things to come. Right, is a guarantee, which means it's an earnest, just like how we would say, Okay, it's the down payment that has been made. Now, what is going to happen is that there is going to be a full redemption of the purchased possession redemption of the purchase possession. so the so the price has been made the purchase has already been made and the holy spirit in dwelling us is the guarantee right is the um, is the uh, the earnest right is the earnest or the down payment of what there will be a full redemption meaning that we will receive a glorified body that um, that this it won't be a earthly fleshly body anymore it will be a spiritual body and it will be it is not something that will be prone to weakness right so we read about that so uh, we see that that is what um, you know we will receive that is the that is what we will um, uh, that that is what we will we will become and the redemption is complete um, until the redemption of the purchase possession to the glory of uh, to the praise of his glory that's verse 14 okay so so the thing is the holy spirit indwelling us is is this is the guarantee okay so we see um, another powerful truth that we are blessed we are chosen and we we are indwelt by the holy spirit right? indwelt by the holy spirit and we are of course we are redeemed okay let's um, Let's look at um, verse 15. Okay, I'll just put this. Okay, so it's coming up, yeah. Okay, verse 15. Okay, verse 15 onwards, let's read. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ who, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, 
far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come right so we'll stop there so here paul begins to pray for the Ephesian church or for the believers in the, in the church in ephesus so he says therefore uh, after i heard of your faith and your love for all the saints you know your you not only your faith but love for all the all the fellow believers when i heard of the faith and love i do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers so you know i've not stopped praying for you i've not stopped thanking god for you ever since i heard of your faith and love right so he says uh, this is what he prays okay this is the prayer so that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him okay so so he prays here for uh, he says for the spirit of revelation and wisdom right for he prays basically for the holy spirit uh, he is called the spirit of revelation and wisdom for a reason because he brings revelation and he brings wisdom right so it's called the spirit of revelation and wisdom so Paul is praying and saying, you know, let there be wisdom, let there be revelation, right? I pray um, uh, to the, the Spirit or that the Father, the God of our, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So, so uh, a few things that he prays for, you know, in the, uh, in the, in the list, we see that he prays for, uh, for the people, to receive revelation, wisdom, and the knowledge of knowledge of, him, uh, knowledge of uh, Christ. So, um, simply put, it says that we may know Him, right? That we may know Him. That we may come to a place of knowing Him. And uh, that that word used there, you know, that spirit and revelation and the knowledge of Him. That means epignosis, which means you know, uh, exact, uh, accurate knowledge. That you you may know Him accurately by the help of the Holy Spirit, right? With the help of the Holy Spirit, that you may know Him accurately, so that they may, they may not be a you know wrong understanding about Him. The Holy Spirit, when He leads, He gives us accurate understanding, right? He gives us uh, the correct picture. He gives us the true nature of God Himself, right? So that is why you know we need to depend on the Holy Spirit. So He prays and He says, "May the Spirit of Revelation and Wisdom." give you um uh, uh give to you revelation spirit sorry um they give to you spirit the spirit of revelation and wisdom uh, wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him so the the holy spirit will enable us to know him that we may know him okay then the second thing he prays is the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? So we pray for two other things. One is, what is the hope? What is the expectation? Okay, the hope is expectation, like uh, it's a healthy expectation. So what is the hope of his calling? Right. What is the uh, you know what is the expectation uh, in his calling? You know, what can you hope for? What can you expect? In other words, the details of his calling, like the, his purpose in all this why is he calling you know what is he calling you to do and so he's, he's saying that you may know uh, the the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened like that you may know in the inner man right that he may give you understanding so it won't be something that is hidden anymore right it won't be something that is vague uh, something that is unclear but something that is accurate right as that the spirit uh, of uh, the Holy Spirit, the revelation and wisdom, may he give you knowledge of him and may he also give you, you know, may he open the eyes of your understanding, may it be enlightened, which means, you know, let there be light. You know, light always um, talks about knowledge and understanding and, uh, and dispelling darkness, right? So darkness uh, meaning uh, there is ignorance or uh, lack of clarity right it's it's not something that we cannot see but here he's saying you know, may you may you see 
right? May you see, may you understand, may you uh, let it be clear. And, uh, you know, let there be, uh, you know, in other words, he's saying the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, uh, meaning let it, let it brighten up, let it illuminate and make you see uh, what are the, uh, uh, one is the hope. The second thing is what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Okay, so that's the second thing. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Okay, so now, um, so which means that um, what is the you know riches, the wealth, the blessing, um, the inheritance that you have as a child of God? Okay, so may He give you understanding. The other way to look at it, some of the translations also see, uh, look at it another way, where see what is the inheritance that God has in us as saints, in us as believers. If you, if you read it, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? So, you know, people have uh, looked at it that way also, which is, which is fine. But the thing is that the Holy Spirit enabling us, giving us understanding, giving us wisdom about the hope, about the inheritance okay uh, what is the inheritance what has god promised what what are what are what is mine because of uh, how, how i've come to be uh, in jesus right because of my relation relationship with the lord because of my co or his covenant with me okay then uh, the fourth thing that he lists is that um what is the verse 19 what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us okay what is the exceeding greatness of uh, of his power so that's another thing that we we are called or he's praying for the believer to know okay uh, what what is the greatness you know what is the immense um, magnitude okay the the quantity of what his power can do really so the what is the greatness of his power? And the word used there is dunamis, right? which means miraculous power, supernatural power, right? So what is the uh, magnitude or what is the greatness, exceeding greatness, right? Exceeding greatness, meaning, you know, it's like saying great greatness, right? Uh, which is exceeding, um, which is going beyond every measure Right, every restriction, right? It's exceeding and greatness, yeah. exceeding greatness of his dunamis, which is miraculous, wonder-working power. Okay, so who is bringing it into our realm or who is opening our eyes, um, giving us that understanding? It's the Holy Spirit. So he's, he prays that may you receive that, right? May you know this exceeding greatness of his power. You know, the, the, uh, the thing that we uh, see there um, is that, you know, what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? You know, that's the thing. You know, the, the ones who believe, the ones who place confidence in, the ones who trust in God, right? So... So only then, you know, are you going to, uh, you know, are you going to even experience or see uh, the greatness of his exceeding power? So he's praying, you know, let their eyes be understand, uh, let the eyes of understanding be opened, um, let it be enlightened to know this, right? Um, that you may know, and and the word know also it, um, you know, it means to perceive with our senses. Okay, um, you know, to observe something, to perceive with our senses. Now, to to really know this in our through our spiritual senses, right? It's it's and it is both. It is also um, to understand with our mind, to uh, you know, to perceive it, to observe it, to study it, right? And uh, by you know, to notice, to discover, to uh, to see it. In, with us with our senses so if which means that uh, uh, you know may you receive it may you know it uh, in your spirit right? the eyes of your understanding being opened you know he says that uh, may you know the exceeding greatness of his power now 
verse 19 according to the working of his mighty power okay uh, and it continues in verse 20 which he worked in christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come so he's you know this is the kind of power so he's saying you know you need to know this right in other words you need to let the holy spirit enable you to experience right? experience through your senses the exceeding greatness of his power and and, he, and he's saying you know this is the same power which he worked in christ when he raised him from the dead so which means this this resurrection power right christ was raised from the dead this resurrection power uh, which which worked in christ because of which he was raised and he was seated at the right hand in the heavenly places and he's in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and uh, might and dominion and every name that is named only not only in this age but also that which is to come so he's saying you know far above you know, he's separated far above all principality and power and, and so on so this is where he is you know he's in the highest place and uh, and not only is he in the highest place but he's also you know the preeminent one the the, the sovereign one he is the head over all right so this power may you know okay you see so this is god's will for us you know he's praying for the efficient church and he's saying may you know it may you understand it so that you may know him right um and so these four things he prays so these are four things that we can pray over our lives also right we can pray over our lives we can paraphrase this uh, these verses and and then say oh god you know i i thank you lord and and say lord uh, uh, Lord, I, I need to know, I may you give me, you know, I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation uh, leading me to give me knowledge uh, or in the knowledge of you, spirit of wisdom and revelation to lead you to the knowledge of you and the eyes of my understanding being enlightened that I may know, you now you change those words and pray it over yourselves that I may know uh, what is the hope of his uh, of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards me who believes in you according to the working of his mighty power and so on so you you know these are things that we can pray over our lives right okay then verse uh, verse 22 and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Okay, so so th this is how chapter one ends. And he put all things under his feet, talking about the authority that Christ has, talking about the headship that Christ has, um, all things under his feet, and he gave him to be head over all things to the church. Right, so church which means the body of believers the called out one so you and i so we receive christ who is the head of all things and right? he's head of the church he is head over all and uh, this the, and the church gives us the definition of you know what what you know or the spiritual um uh, you know, the thing that church is, you know, description of the church, special description, it says that church, which is his body, right? It is the body of Christ. And that's why we say, you know, the church is the body of Christ. Christ is the head of the church. So both ideas are here. The, both those truths are here that gave him to be head over all uh, things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all and in all okay the fullness so which means every believer is part of the body of christ and in every believer the lord jesus fills all in all the fullness of him dwells in every believer 
the fullness of who Christ is. You know, his deity, his uh, his uh, omnipotence, is is you know whatever makes him God, right? whatever makes him deity, the fullness of him dwells in the body of Christ, right? Dwells in the church, all in all, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Okay, so that's that's the thing. So this is the body of Christ, the body of believers. They are the body of Christ. The fullness of Christ fills every body, which is part of the body of Christ. Okay, so we understand that, and so it is. This is something to be, you know, treated with honor, right? Treated uh, respectfully, because we see that the church is the body of Christ. Okay, it's not the building; it's the people. And spiritually, everyone, you know, make up or are part of the body of Christ. Every true believer, everyone who has received Christ, right, is is becomes is placed is becomes the body of Christ. So this is what we see. Okay. Um, the other thing is that uh, that that Christ is the head of the church. Uh, there's no one else. You know, he might put others who might be shepherds in the church, but ultimately Christ is the head of the church. Right? They might be delegated leaders, right? Uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, but ultimately Christ is the head of the church. Okay, and uh, uh, and the church is something that belongs to Christ because it is His body, which is which is Him. Right, which is part of him, belongs to him. The church is Christ's body. Okay, so this is what we see in chapter one. Okay, let's move on to chapter two. Okay, so we see that over and over again, you know, uh, Paul talks about who you and I have become because of who we are in Christ. He talks about that over and over again it gives more and more revelation more and more understanding to who we have become what we have received okay so that's why in in chapter one also he says you know you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in christ you know that you he chose you in him before the foundations of the earth and so on right in him you have redemption that you've been redeemed you've been bought out right uh, and in that prayer, we see, you know, what God's will is for every believer, for the believer to know the, uh, know Christ, right? Um, the, for the believer to uh, to receive the Holy Spirit, and uh, know what is the you know what is the inheritance, the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints. To know that, right? and also to know the greatness of God's power. Because sometimes people might say, okay, um, that is for someone else, or I'm not comfortable with that, um, etc. Right? But here we see that God's will, God's desire, his wish is that the believer, after having received the Holy Spirit, uh, who is the guarantee right, um, for the redemption that's going to happen, uh, this is God's desire that we may know him in all these ways, right? Uh, which includes the greatness of his power, which is the greatness of his resurrection power, that we may know him, that we may experience him firsthand in all these ways, right? Okay, um, let's read uh, chapter two. Okay, in chapter two, maybe the, we can read the first 10 verses, right? Uh, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and whereby nature children of wrath just as the others but god who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit 
together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Okay, so another amazing, you know, revelation of what has happened to us. Okay, so what does he say? Verse one, you, he made alive. You, he made alive, which means that you, he has quickened, brought life, right? And you, he has made alive. You were actually dead, okay, lifeless in your trespasses and sins. He uses two words, trespasses, which means to, um, which is a deviation from the truth, right? A misdeed, uh, an action. And of course, he uses the word sin, which is uh, which is missing the mark, right? Missing the mark to to fall short of God's law and uh, something offensive, uh, an action that is offensive to God. So, um, so what is the so what is he saying that you were actually dead, you were lifeless in trespasses and sins right um you were deviating from the truth and you were missing the mark and you were dead in it right you were lifeless in it you did not have life okay um but the first part of that verse says that you he made alive so he quickened he brought in and he made alive you, you know, uh, like in the sense he is, he's talking about spiritual life here, right? Because the man is alive physically, but though being alive physically, the person is lifeless with regard to his spirit because the person is dead in trespasses and sins. Right? It's not alive or not responding to the things of God, but to the things of the flesh, right? Uh, or sins. Um, so he's saying you, he made alive, he quickened, he did something to your spirit, uh, because you were dead in trespasses. Okay. So he's saying trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Okay. You once walked according to the course of this world. Okay. So in, you walked in trespasses, which means this is how you lived. You made choices. You had a lifestyle, which was sinful which was not according to truth, which was missing the mark, falling short of God standards. Uh, you once walked like that, you know, day in and day out, you lived like that, according to the cause of this world, you know, according to, um, if you were to say that there was a pathway that the world generally, you know, people uh, in the world were taking, that is what you were taking too. That is the route that you were taking, right? Um, the cause of this world, uh, path of this world, the, whatever the world was doing, whatever the world was indulging in, you know, that is what you were doing, right? According to the cause of this world. Now, um, according to the prince of the power of the air, um, so that is another thing, you know, according to the cause of this world, in a sense, okay, uh, whatever the things were worldly, whatever the people of the world were doing, uh, that is what you were also doing. And that, that is what, that is how you were living. Um, and it was also according to the prince of the power of the air, you know, referring to Satan, referring to the, and, uh, you know, the, the powers of darkness, right? And primarily referring to the devil, referring to Satan. Uh, says, according to the prince of the power of the air, okay, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Now, this 
this spirit is at work, either influencing, either possessing, either demonizing, to whatever degree, right? But it, it's at work in the sons of disobedience. It, mean, it means that people who do not know Christ, people who are rejected Christ, now the spirit of the, this spirit, which is uh, Satan, the prince of the power of the air, is at work. He works in them. He influences them. Uh, he, he ensnares them, traps them, all that, right? Whatever Satan does, stealing, killing, destroying, trapping, accusing, uh, tempting, all that, you know, who now works in the sons of disobedience. Right? And verse 3, among whom we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as the other so he's reminding them you know we were dead but now we have actually been made alive right and you once walked like this you once this is what this was your life this was your lifestyle according to the cause of this world according to the worldly ways you once walked according to the power according to the prince of the power of the air according to you know what satan would want us to do you were doing it um, and uh, who works in the sons of disobedience which means that okay we were once children of disobedience so he was working in us and we were living according to his leading right and he says among whom like among the sons of disobedience uh, we lived and we conducted ourselves you know we we lived a life in which we we conducted ourselves we lived like this we li lived like them right we also conducted ourselves you know the other translation is conversation which means uh, we we were busy we were you know con having conversations uh, or uh, you know we were uh, living our lives in in such a manner and uh, how how was it he says that according to the um, lust of our flesh. Okay, we conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, which means whatever the fleshly appetites were, whatever the fleshly pull was, desires were, desire was, we lived according to that. Okay, and also fulfilling. We, you know, this this lust was actually, um, you know, this was pulling us to fulfill the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Right? The fleshly appetites, bodily appetites, and of the mind, which was obviously unrenewed to the truth of God. So we were pulled to do that. And we lived according to that, according to that pull, according to that desire. Right? And he also describes how were we? We were by nature children of wrath, just as the other. So he's talking about you know, our nature itself. Uh, was unrighteousness. Like spiritually, we were dead, and our spirit was not born again. No, it was it was dead. It was lifeless, and it was dead in trespasses and sins, like fully into sin, into trespass. Right? And my spirit, our spirit, was not born again. And so he's saying, in the, by nature, right? inherent quality, inherent ability to live, was as children of wrath. Right? We were not children of righteousness, children of wrath. You know, um, uh, I think we see this in John chapter one. Right? John chapter one um, says, "But as many, John chapter one and verse twelve, and as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God." To those who believe in his name so here is talking about children of god and uh, here paul mentions in verse 3 children of wrath now if you go further down um, or maybe we need to uh, um, let me just dwell among us and we have received okay let me just uh, get that verse. Um, uh, 
I think it's John 3 then. Um, yeah. Sorry, John 3, um, verse 18, right? John 3, verse 16. 16 talks about uh, 16 talks about you, you know what verse 16 is that God so loved the world. Um, verse 17 says that God did not son, send the Son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And verse 18, we see that um, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the Son of the uh, so in the name of the only begotten son of god okay so saying that they have not believed that they are condemned already so he's describing the position describing the condition of the children of wrath right people who are condemned already and by nature which means that internally by nature our spirit was sinful right there was nothing done to change it so we were by nature, our inherent quality was to live according to the flesh, live according to the uh, desires of the mind, and to conduct ourselves in trespasses and sins. So this was a condition. Okay, our nature was corrupt. Okay, uh, verse four. But God, who is rich in mercy, okay, God who is rich in mercy. Because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were de dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. So even when we were dead in trespasses, the Lord Jesus died on the cross. Right? He died, he was buried, he rose again. Right? He died on the cross and he died, one died that all might be represented in that one death you know the, the entire world so um so we see that he died for all as a substitute right so here verse 4 says that god is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses he made us alive together with christ and how did this happen this happened on the cross and uh, he died uh, when he was nailed to the cross we were nailed to the cross when he was buried we were buried when he rose again we rose again so that is why you know we can say that we were made alive in christ made us alive together with christ but this reality becomes this this whatever christ did becomes a reality in our lives when we receive by faith right um because it says, by grace you have been saved. The last part of verse 5. By grace you have been saved. Which means that it's something that you did not merit. Something that you did not deserve. Right? But he made it possible. He made it uh, possible. He, Even though we were not deserving, we were undeserving, he made it possible. So that is why it is by grace that you have been saved okay so what what happened verse 6 says he raised us up together made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so when Christ rose you know we we were raised us up to we were raised along with him when he took his place in the heavenlies and he made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So spiritually, this is our position. Right? We are with him. Verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Okay, so we'll take a break now. Okay, and then uh, we will get back.